Hi everyone, Stacey Heisman here for GI Jobs Magazine, and I've got a great guest today. His name is Justin Mond, and he's coming to us from Houston, Texas, good old state of Texas. How are you, Justin? Good, ma'am. How are you? I'm doing great. Well, Justin's with us today, and he's with a great company called Safe Spill, and um, he's also a veteran of, I believe, the Army. But I'll let him talk about it, but um, talk about his service, but. He's here today to talk a little bit about what he does, and I think you'll find this really interesting. He's got a great title, and the title really says a lot about not only the company, but a lot about Justin. So, um, hi, Justin, let's talk a little bit about your military service. Tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. So I did 15 years in service in the Army. Um, I started off as infantry for about 10 years and had four combat deployments with them. So I was stationed with um, Fort Drum, New York for a a good portion, um, but I did three tour, three tours with them, Afghanistan in 03, and then Iraq in 05 and 07. Then I went to Fort Stewart, Georgia, and went back overseas again to Iraq in 09, and then they decided to make me a recruiter. So I did my last five years of service as a recruiter in, in North Carolina, which was, was very interesting. Um, it, it was fun. It got me out of my shell a little bit, um, but uh, yeah, that's why I turned around, did 15 years, got out in 2017, and moved here to Houston. So, okay, got it. Now, so you were a recruiter at the very end. So you went from combat infantry to recruiter. Was that a big jump for you? Huge jump. Um, <laughs> very, very, very different. Um, obviously, being infantry or anything, you're out in the field, you're with the guys a lot. There's a lot of things going on. And then as you go to a recruiter, it's very much of sitting behind a desk, um, talking with you know students that are trying to go into college or high school. And just the mentality is very, very different. And then plus, I was not, I was more of an introvert, to be honest. Um, I did not really like talking to people. Um, so it was very different for me. Um, but going through the recruiting school, they did get you out of your shell a little bit. And now that has actually kind of started me on that path as far as for my career now, plus some other things that I'm doing that I do outside of this. Okay, that's a great transition to this to this topic, which is what you do today. Your title is actually um, People Operations Manager, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. That's a great title, but we were talking a little off camera about what that title is and what it really means. So give us a little bit about background about your title. Sure. So HR, right? Everybody gets, when they hear HR, they think stuffy. It's very like uppity if you, oh, you're going to see, you know, Justin and HR. They ever want to get that whole pit in their stomach and they're like, okay, this, this is bad. Um, well, people operations is still in that same realm, but what we do is we actually focus on the people in the team. Like, for instance, we don't call anybody employees. There's no such thing as an employee here. Everybody's a team member because we're all together for the same thing, going for the same goal. So with people operations, our whole thing is to how can we help you? How can we help you get to the next level? How can we kind of identify some things that potentially could be, you know, that needs some correcting? So it's more proactive instead of reactive. Okay, that's, I mean, it's just a great way to look at it. I love the idea of being proactive. And I can't help but say, I can't help but think that your recruiter job at the last five years of your life didn't help bring you out of your shell to be able to be called a people operations manager in such a proactive way. So there's always something positive about being a recruiter at the end of the day, right? Well, okay, let's talk there a little is. bit of yeah. Let's talk a little bit about what Safe Spill is, so that people have a good understanding about what your company does. Yeah, so Safe Spill, what we do, we're actually a manufacturing company. Um, so we have two main product lines, and we're within the fire fire protection. So one product line is more for aviation, so like military aircraft or somebody who's got a good like a large aircraft or anything like that. Um, we actually do do stuff for the DOD. So we're already kind of there. So that kind of brought me back home to being around everybody in that military culture. I still get to see everybody and go to military bases. But then we also have another product line, which is more for oil and gas and everything else to store ISUs. Um, so basically it's an IBC tote container. So you're still connected. That actually has got to feel pretty good. I, as all the vets I talk to, there's something that being able to still be a part of something as big as like the military or DOD does make a difference in their transition. I think that's, that's good to hear. Okay, so let's talk about the transition. How did you, how, what were some of your fears before you got out, like right before you got out? Just 
if, if you're if there are veterans out there listening or active duty service members who are listening right now are about ready to punch out what kind of fears did you have and how i'm wondering how they can relate to you so for me honestly the biggest thing is i had i had no idea what i wanted to do like zero um it, everybody kind of has some mos isn't or jobs that are all very transferable that if they go into it, okay, I'm in communications, I wanna go into some type of communications field because I have an interest in that, right? For infantry, it's not like I can come out and say, yes, this is what I'm gonna do as a civilian. I did have a huge drive to go into law enforcement. That was always something that I had um, ever since I was a kid. But, you know, I had family members that they told me, hey, Justin, you know, you can only play in traffic so many times before you get hit. So I decided, maybe I don't want to go that route. Um, sure. So, but yeah, that's, to be honest, Stacey, that was the, the biggest thing. Like, I just didn't know what I wanted to do. The sky was the limit and I just didn't have a direction in life really. So that was well, my I think that, uh, Yeah, no, I think this is, this, this is a good topic because a lot of folks feel like they have to leverage their background in order to succeed in their future. And I think that you've kind of showed that you can kind of grow up to be anything you want. You don't have to stay in the same MOS or career field. And I think a lot of people struggle with that. So I really appreciate you kind of touching on that because I think people, when they start to get out of the service, they think they have to do what they've always done, but you've uh, told me differently. Okay, so tell me what's different in the civilian world to you? What was the hardest part? What was the biggest challenge for you? Uh, biggest challenge is, I guess, for one, I, I wasn't properly prepared as far as for myself. Um, military turned around and obviously the skills were there, the stuff, you know, taps and everything to be able to transition. Um, I did not take advantage of it, which was my own fault because I thought I knew, I knew better. Um, I thought as far as the military service being under my belt, masters in business being under my belt, I'm a shoe in and that's not the case. Um, it's oh, actually, really? God, it's that's, this is fascinating. I love it. Okay. Keep talking. Keep talking. This is great. Um, there's there's a lot of things that you have to do and because of you know for a lot of companies they don't really understand you know military service unless they have a dedicated person that does that that can actually see the resume understand what's going on and you know that was a big reason why this company you know safe spill brought me on is because of i can see that type of stuff i understand the difference you know if if somebody's in service for you say example eight years but they're still a specialist um that to some people is a red flag but it's not necessarily depending on their mos it could be a smaller group they could be high in points there's a lot of factors in there that civilians just don't understand um but for me that's that's probably the biggest thing like just not being able to relate the way that i need to or that I feel that I can, as far as with other with you know other people that are out in the civilian world. Um, but here it is, it's very nice as far as having a home, having people that can actually understand, that ask the questions, um, that allows me and the other veterans in the company to kind of be who we are, and they kind of encourage that. So, well, right, and I was reading, you know, we we're talking off camera a little bit about what you try to do and. If I read this right, I mean, Safe Spill really tries to a 50% veterans is what you try to have your workforce out. Did I get that right? Yeah. So right now, that is as Dude, we are that's great. Right, right now, we're in a scaling. So we're starting to grow as far as within the company because a lot of things are starting to take off relatively quickly. Um, I mean, as of right now, the, the DOD actually is trying to get rid of all their foam systems within their hangars by 2024. And so we're kind of being the, the, the front runner and really spearheading that. And so with that being said, you know, the company's going to grow, right? So as that takes place, our goal is to be 50% bets, you know, at, during that time. I mean, we, we go above and beyond to try and do things as far as with the ERG. I mean, the shirt that I'm wearing right now is Safe Spill, like it's actually like it's a logoed. So every person within their branch actually has a shirt that shows that we, we have our own challenge coin now. We've got a lot of stuff with the Department of Labor, um, you know, military friendly employers, like just a lot of things. We're very, very big within the veteran community, um, especially myself. And it's just something that the company is behind. And I don't, I don't really have to push it. The CEO is so incredible at 
at looking at things and saying, look, I want to support this. Like, what can I do? What can we do as a company to be able to do that? And there's a lot of companies out there, Trey and Stacey, that I've been a part of that they say that they want to because it sounds good or looks good, right? And I'm not down on them, but there's very, very, there's a huge difference between saying that you'll do something and actually acting on that. Absolutely. And I like to call that those are paper perks, you know, the, and the, and really it's the proof is in the people and understanding yep. the, the resumes and understanding the workforce, understanding transition and understanding just what you said about the resumes and being able to see through and speak um, military service and understand what that looks like and how to translate to the civilian world. I love everything that you said. It really speaks, I think, to me as uh, someone who understands this process and also to those who are listening. I, I do want to mention how you found the job because I, I've done this, I can't tell you, I mean, I've done this for 10 years, I'm interviewing uh, successful people like yourself. There's a handful who have used social media to really um, to have leveraged that, to be able to find your job. Did I get that right? That you found this on LinkedIn, applied and was hired. Tell, tell us a little bit about that process. Yes, ma'am. So obviously having that background with recruiting um, and going through and finding out like how to network and do things. I actually went across and I was looking for, for a position. I had no idea what I was really looking for. And I actually came across this job on, on LinkedIn. And then I turned around and I applied while I was waiting. Um, I started connecting with everybody. So I went through, found, okay, here's a CEO, here's our operations manager, here's everybody else. And I tried to start connecting with them. Um, only the CEO actually accepted my invite. Everybody else was like, nope. Um, he did not engage with me, but it opened the door to where I could turn around and at least send him something of like, hey, here's, here's some things potentially that might have in common. I'm really interested in what's going on. I'm trying to get my foot in the door. Don't know if it actually worked or not. He still to this day has not told me, yes, it had, did or did not work, but I am here. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I try to network as much as I could with anything. I think that's great. And I always think that people need to use every tool available to them, including tasks. And um, LinkedIn, of course, and being able, being able to, the word leverage keeps coming up because it really is, those are at your disposal and you need to be able to use them not just on the surface, but be able to be proactive with them and reach out to the networks, right? Because that's really what it comes 100%. down to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that's, that's something, I'm sorry, I was just going to say, that's something for veterans to re like really, really like focus on because they, they don't really teach us that stuff as far as with anything when we're getting yeah. out. But for instance, just to give you a little bit of, of an idea, if I put a position out there, depending on what it is, obviously, it's anywhere between 80 to 320 applicants that will turn oh. around that will actually turn around and say hey i want to be part of your team i want to be a part of this and that's fantastic but at the end of the day it will kind of come down to one or two people that are actually going to be able to get into that spot at that time well you have to try and separate yourself you have to try and figure out okay how can i do that and for and i'll be 100 percent if an applicant turns around and messages me and they're, hey, I'm really interested in the, in the position, I really want to have a conversation, it will force me at that point in time to go look for their resume and kind of look through it and they get a faster feedback, whether yes, hey, let's move forward or no, let's not. Even though I may or may not still get to it at that time, but if they're number 315 and I'm already going through and maybe person 105 actually got the position I probably had didn't see their stuff and it's going to be put back into the loop as far as for the next time we have it open which now they're competing again against another you know hundred and some odd people I have to tell you that is just a gem of a of a, a piece of advice that is perfect for people to understand that you have to be able to stand out you have to be able to separate yourself even if it's just by a hair my husband likens the process to online dating <laughs> and how I'm trying to figure out how yeah. to dating all over again. You just got to stand out uh, somehow. You, know, you got to be 100%. outside the profile. <laughs> 100%. So, exactly. Well, listen, this has been a fantastic interview. I think this is full of really great advice, very authentic experiences that I think people out there who are listening, Justin can relate to. So I'm already going to say thank you for putting yourself out there and for allowing yourself to be interviewed today. Because at the end of the day, you are going to help someone with this interview. So thank you very thank much, Justin from Safe Spill in Houston, Texas. I'm Stacy. 
Allsburg Heisman, and I will see you later from GI Jobs. Thank you.